Hi there and welcome back to Vietnam where I'm going to give my final opinions after having listened all the way through to the uh, New Beginning album by Bandmade. Now this is not the first album we've listened to by Bandmade, it's certainly not the first song we've listened to, I think most of their back catalogue now. However, if you didn't here before then remember this is part of a playlist and the playlist is in the description below I know I keep on saying this in all the videos but you can check out my track by track review of every single song on this album now the reason why um, I'm doing a conclusion here is obviously to try and bring into perspective the whole thing now Obviously, we've listened to World Domination, the most recent album, as well as many of their singles in between. And we've listened to their very first album uh, by Band Made, which was um, Made in Japan. So glad I remembered that. Now, this one, obviously, I get the idea that obviously the first two albums were both written by staff writers, but this one was to set a bit of a tone. I mean, the whole album name, New Beginning. Clearly, the whole tone is that this is a new band made. This is the more rocky band made. I know many of their more uh, contemporary fans are not such big fans of the first album, sort of citing it as being more watered down, less musical, more pop rocky. Now, I would certainly say that having listened to the first album, I will quickly cover that my opinion on that is that it is, from a musicianship standpoint, yeah, it's nowhere near as advanced as their more recent stuff, and certainly nowhere near as advanced as even this, their second album. However, I do think from a songwriting perspective, it's very strong. It's got very strong choruses in a lot of the songs. It's got really interesting uh, variation in writing. It's got poppier songs, pop rock songs. It's got heavy songs. It's got songs in the middle. It's got slow songs, fast songs. It is actually, for quite a short record, it's actually a very, very diverse one. And it really shows that what the musicians at the time, what they may not have had in their um, arsenal as musicians at the time certainly was made up for by a good quality of writing a good variation on the album now when we come through to this album yes this album doesn't have quite as much variation in tone you don't I mean it is all rock all the time however I will give credit for the fact that what I think really makes this album strong is that the songs do st still sound as differently written as they did on that first album, if you understand what I mean. So they're all rock, but each one is very identifiable as being different. In fact, the uh, songs that I regard as the most samey are probably the first two, Thrill and Freezer, which are very much just, okay, hard rock riffing and a chorus thrown in. Um, and I do accept that I do understand why they were thrown front and center. They were really to announce uh, what the band was doing. A lot of the time bands who are maybe more established will put the first song on their album will be quite a safe one. It'll be one which just makes uh, uh, listeners feel at home when it comes in. But if a band's really trying to you know, identify themselves as doing something different, then this is the way you'll start. I mean, take for example things like um, uh, when Blur did their self-entitled album, the very first song on that album was immediately at start with something a little bit you know, not so poppy, not so immediately catchy, something a little bit more dark. Um, and that's what they did. And that really announced that they were going for a change. And that was something they did a couple of times in their career because they were a band who were known for changing their sound relatively frequently. Um, now, when you look at something like this, this is a good example of that. And you, know, you put Thrill as the first song. I know it's a popular single and it is a good single, actually. I think it's a really enjoyable track. However, that is mainly there along with Freezer to, like I say, announce this new sound. And then Real Existence, they go into more of a traditional hard rock sound, but again, very, very heavy. Now, um, Pri uh, Price of Pride was probably, I would say on this album, the song that came off to me as being weakest. Um, and that's not to say it was bad, actually. It was a good, uh, good song altogether. Um, I felt that a lot of it, however, was being saved by Akane's playing. Akane, who she um, just kept on switching up the rhythm, she kept on switching up the style. It wasn't a bad song, like I said. This is not to any huge criticism, but I do think if it had been played with a straight beat, it could have been very boring and very forgettable. Um, you know, sort of a good rock song when it's on at the time, but something you just never even remember to come back to. It was that changing up of the beat that made it interesting. So at this point in the album, you know, you've got two sort of riff based songs, two rock songs, and I must admit that if that was the beginning and that I didn't know what was coming later, and certainly knowing things like Don't Let Me Down at being at the end, and already knowing that I kind of like Bandmade anyway, a really good band who I've been enjoying through this channel a huge amount, then I would have probably been looking at this as being eh, okay, but. You know, if this was the first band uh, album I was ever hearing by them and I was four tracks in, I wouldn't be hugely impressed if I'm a bit honest with you. I'd just be kind of like, this is okay, not stand out in any way. Um, and the last half of the album totally flips that on its head. Now, Arcadia Girl is the first time I really sort of was listening to one of these songs and went, yeah, this really, really, really punches through. 
All the songs have been different, yes, but Arcadia Girl really announced itself. That intro, which I know it's not a purist intro, there's a lot of production in it, but immediately it sets the tone that they're going for something atmospheric and the song continues to build. It has a bit of a weird pre-chorus before the first chorus comes in. I admit it did lose a bit of attention there. And But then, you know, the, uh, the uh, key change in the choruses as well was a little bit weird, but this is an album where the more you listen to it, the more Arcadia Girl is a song that you really look forward to. I've listened to this um, a few times now, uh, between doing the last song I reviewed, which was actually Beauty and the Beast, there's a bit of a chronological weirdness to how I did them, because I'd already reviewed the last two tracks before uh, I did this as an album listen through, um, just reviewed them as singles, basically, uh, effectively. Um, so Beauty and the Beast was the last one I listened to, but I've actually gone back and listened to this album twice more before doing this final conclusion. And Arcadia Girl is definitely the one I look forward to a lot now. It is a bit of a jarring first listen. It works most of the way through, but certainly the more you get used to it and the more you listen to it, it's just very enjoyable. It's got a hectic energy to it. It builds up the tension, whereas I'm sort of Frill and Freezer, you, know, you sort of, <laughs> they almost sound like that sort of cock rock, you know, just arrogant, swaggy rock. Nothing wrong with that. That's a perfectly valid style. It's totally a good, fun thing to do, but it doesn't really stand the test of time in my mind. It's a very easy thing to do. Real existence, like I say, straight rock strong. Pride, uh, Price of Pride doesn't really click to me as being anything particularly special. It just kind of works thanks to a little bit of intelligent uh, beat management. Arcadia Girl though is one where you just go, okay, this is this is really, it, it's building atmosphere. It's building a feeling of tension. And it really manages to, as well as building up, make the chorus sound uh, like the real focus of the song. So everything else does build toward the chorus. You've got a great bridge as well. Just everything about that song really works. Um, it's a little, it's one of those odd ones where it's an odd little song, but it works. And for me, that is where the album starts to announce itself. And what a brilliant choice to right after it put Don't Apply the Break, which is arguably the simplest song in the album. I do take Don't Let Me Down into consideration when I say that. Don't Apply the Break is very simple. Even the solo, they feel like it's a case of going simple, keeping everything simple, easy to follow and easy to rock along to. And it results in it being a very, very strong rock offering. You know, just over three minutes long, you can really rock out with it. It's really enjoyable. It doesn't throw you off at all. It's very inviting, not challenging, but very competent. And examples that when they do a simple song, they only do it when they know the song in its simple writing sense is enough. Melody's great, chorus is great. Um, the way that it builds up through the verse into the chorus, not by any twiddling, just by knowing when to play and when not to play. It's the gaps in the song that make it interesting. So that what is otherwise a very simple sort of punky hard rock chorus with no real thrills actually feels like a real dramatic crescendo, a real payoff because of the fact that the verse is well managed. Brilliant. Nice contrast to Arcadia Girl, and now the album's starting to pick up a lot of pace. Then you get into Beauty and the Beast. Like I said, Beauty and the Beast, I do feel that it's a song where nothing really, it flows well, but nothing really clicks and bursts through enough to give the song identity. But at the same time, it's so brave. It's got so many things going on. It's got that really interesting chorus, a lot of uh, melodic ideas in there, the really sort of fast drum beats, you know, the punky bits, there's, there's, you know, the breakdown in the bridge. Everything about that song feels like they're really, really playing at experimenting and doing the most they can. Again, I know this is a staff written album, but it comes across as a song that really then throws a, a real sort of ambition into things. And again, in the same way that Arcadia Girl was backed up by Don't Apply the Break, Beat in the Beast is backed up by Don't Let Me Down, which is just probably, if not their catchiest song ever, it's one of their catchiest songs ever. I know it's a, maybe a little bit repetitive, I know it's very simple, but wow, does it work. And it makes a nice backup to Beat in the Beast. And then Shake That, a good way to end an album. It's a bit of a weird little song, but it just kind of, you know, it's kind of just very enjoyable. And the more you listen to it, the more you just kind of find yourself taken by it. Just like, yeah, this is a good song. Um, and that's that's my overall feeling about this album, is that it's a tale of two halves. The first, like, well, the first four songs, it's only a nine song album, so it's very hard to find a half unless you cut somewhere in the middle of Arcadia Girl. But if we look at the first four songs, they're good. They're competent, they're reliable, and they announce the change in the tone of the album. But it's really, I listen to that waiting for the last five songs, because the last five songs is where I really feel like we get to see a flourish of creativity. Yeah, it's all hard rock. I get that, I know that, and as someone who, like I say, my thing I most liked about the first album was the ability it had to change, almost change genre, you know, it really changed for a lot of tones to something which was a pure rock album after all. It went through giving you a feeling that they were doing different things, 
this feels more like it's playful writing wise and I enjoyed it. I think we're starting to see at this point, you're starting to see the first signs of the band really playing around. Um, again, Misa was always the one who, she seems really active and at the top of her game on all the albums, but as I said before when I was reviewing the last album, uh, Made in Japan, bass is the one thing in Japan, bassists are allowed to go free reign. You even listen to the most cheesy of pop in Japan, and the bass is really fun. I mean, that they just seems to be no restraint on bass players. And the country, in my opinion, produces the best bass players in the world. And that was a fantastic uh, thing for uh, Bandmade because, like I said, I don't know if they're um, having staff writers restricted how complicated they were allowed to play um, or if we've just been watching the development of, as musicians, which I suspect we have. But it is glorious that Mies has always been at the top of a game throughout. This is definitely the album where you can hear Akane starting to find her feet and really adding something to the band. Uh, again, I don't know if that was her adding her bits to a song or whether the writers were now aware of the talent she had and were able to give give her more to play with and give her more creative things to do in the songs but overall this is an album that I think I like it um, I like the fact that each of the songs stands out it is a bit short I always kind of regard 10 songs should be the minimum for an album and when you've got songs that are around about the three minute mark you should really be aiming for 12 but accepting it as an album it doesn't outstay its welcome that's one of the strongest things about it at nine songs it doesn't feel like it's dragging it kind of just sticks around for the right length of time um, yeah, good album. This is definitely one I'll be coming back to listen to again. I found Made in Japan was an album that I wanted to listen to again. And I must admit, after listening to Made in Japan and World Domination, World Domination has individual songs that I like probably more than anything I could pick off of these two albums. It'd be a bit of a tight one, but I think that World Domination has some really strong songs on it. But overall, as an album, I must admit that I found myself coming back to listen to um, Made in Japan more. And I suspect I'll find this one I'll be coming back to listen to more than World Domination as well, simply because it feels like there is more writing in there. And that I know is because there's more writers, you know, it's staff written, and because the variation of tone is more clear on these. I, um, have, through our discussions, we've discussed the fact that um, on World Domination, the band weren't, were kind of pressed. They weren't given much time to record the album and write the album because they were on tour. I do honestly think, and I'm hoping with the changes that they've had with their record company and management, I believe, but I do hope, one thing I really hope is that they are given time to show their creativity in the studio. They're given more time to write, more time to create, because this is the kind of thing, like I said, I've only heard um, three of their albums in the band Micro EP all the way through. And I have heard a lot of songs from the other albums as well, which I'll be doing listen throughs to as well. But it just really stands out to me that this is a band who I think they can write as good as anything that their staff writers did for them before. Um, but the staff writers get a lot of time to write. And I do want to see Band May given enough time to write so that they can do an album that's as eclectic. At very least, whether you like these first two albums or not, or whether you like the first one, not the second, or the second, not the first, as seems to be the case with more people, you have to admit these are very eclectic albums by comparison to World Domination, and I don't think that reflects fairly on Band Made as writers. So what I'm really looking forward to hearing on their new album when it comes out in December, I believe it is of this year, 2019, if you're watching this in the future. Hello, future. Um, I'm hoping that they get enough time, and they've had enough time, because I believe they've already recorded it, to sit down and write an album that truly reflects their maturity as musicians and as songwriters and the eclectic nature that I think that they can honestly achieve. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Like I said, I hope you've been watching this all the way through. If not, go back and check out the, in the description below. You can find the playlist to listen to the track by track for every single song on New Beginning by Band Made, this album that we've been listening to. I've really enjoyed it. Like I said, I can't wait to go back and listen to the whole thing again, but the second half, definitely from track five to nine, track nine is the highlight for me. Um, it did identify a change in the band, but I don't think it lost any of their core qualities hugely. I'd have liked to have seen a little bit more of that prop rock fun, maybe one or two tracks in here, but I can't complain about basically what we got. And in my opinion, um, you know, it, it shows a great sign of how the band have developed into what we know today, but I'm looking forward to checking out more of their albums soon. I think it's brand new made next, but I'll be checking. Checking out which one comes chronologically next next soon on this channel but thank you so much for tuning in like i say as well in that description below you can find links to our reddit and our discord if you want to get more involved with giving us suggestions on what to listen to next as well and obviously and if you're new to the channel we've got so many reviews of so many things we're up to nearly 500 videos now so go in there and check them out um 
and also you've know, got our Facebook, you've got our Twitter, and if you really like what we're doing, get on our Patreon as well, because we don't make any money doing this, and so we'll give you some nice little perks if you want to chip in a bit, but thank you so much for joining, like I say today, and for now, from Vietnam, where I temporarily am, don't worry, I'll be back in Japan soon, but I'm really enjoying it here, actually, for this little trip of mine, but for now, ciao, ciao.